So in this video I'll show you how to install heated seats into your Lexus IS 350 or 250. Should be the same. Some Lexus come factory installed with heated, heated and cooled seats, but uh, mine didn't. It's an optional extra. Don't know how much extra you pay. But the first step to do is to undo um, these four 14 millimeter um, bolts. They're stuck in pretty well, so you might need something a bit bigger than a than a half inch number 14 um, socket. But I used a half inch number 14 quality socket. And then once you get the seat loose, um, tilt the seat back and unplug these three connector looms. So before doing this, I suggest disconnecting the battery because your AB uh, your um, airbags. Uh, is installed in the side of the seat here and um, I, I've read that maybe disconnecting this can cause the airbag to go off so I suggest disconnecting the battery first um, before you disconnect these seat plugs um, yep yeah. oh now while getting the seat back into the car and out now the seat is very heavy so I should suggest doing it. So the free plugs are pretty easy to access, one, two, three, airbag. Now while the seat is out or... Um, okay so to run the wires up from below here up into here you have to remove the center console covers. So just pull this out, pull this one out, I should have pulled it out before but just pull it back and up, pull them out and up pretty easy just there's the clips there so it comes back and up um, and then I guess you can pull pull this up so it should just come up like that probably best to move the gear shifter knob back before you do this oh, it might be okay in that position so now you can get in there and run your wires all the way up and into this location here and later on you'll be installing the um, seat heater knobs if they're the same as this kit that you bought here into maybe here and here um, depending on where you want to place them I think um, factory has them here and here so I might install them here now to gain better access you can unscrew the gear shifter knob and it should just come straight off and then you should be able to pull this up up like that and out so you can get better access to in here so I've pulled the center console out of the car and I've um, managed to break out pretty easily with some small pliers um, these two slots here from this piece of plastic and that's where I've decided I want to put the, the two buttons which I have over here, these two. So I've pre-drilled a pilot hole, marked it up, I've actually lined it up with these two um, markers that are there already and this is where hopefully they'll be positioned once I'm done. Cool, so holes are drilled, buttons installed, wasn't too hard, these are 20mm holes, looks pretty good actually. Um, that's the back side, so all I have to do now is plug in the loom to the back connectors and should be good to go. Okay, so routing the cable down um, to the seats is pretty easy. All we have to do is pull up the carpet a little bit, just like this, and then feed it, just drop it down here, feed the cable through, and then through the hole. While I was down there I found, and I, I don't know what this is, but I guess it's a 10 cent coin, Japanese. Looks pretty cool. Don't know what it says, um, but yeah, might find something else. Um, to get the power, I'm just going to feed it from, as you can see, this red wire here um, feeds all the way to the back of the compartment here, um, which is feeding the cigarette lighter. So this is the direct connection to the cigarette lighter. I'm only going to be drawing about seven amps. I've already measured it. Um, the, the fuse is ten amps. Um, it's ready for 
15 amps so it should be enough power to power the heated seats plus all the auxiliary items um, to make, make the radar detector so to get the um, to get this off all you have to do is um, we have to just pull this back and it should just pop off um, I don't recommend these somebody else has already connected this in I'm probably going to redo these terminals with something a bit more heavy duty just so that they don't heat up okay so now that so the two bottom screws were pretty easy to get off um, these ones here are a bit difficult as soon as I undid started undoing these three um, the nut behind started spinning so I just got a big flathead screwdriver held it down tight started undoing the screw which seems to work um, it just comes straight out so if you're not get stuck in there just put that head down there and hold it tight so it doesn't spin also don't forget there's one more cool so once you got the cover off um, you can start undoing some of the fabric so just pop this off like that um, these are just clipped in here so plastic clips just pop that out these just clip back in so when you put them back in just put them wrap it around like that and clip it back onto the metal framework there same for this this one sits up under that metal bit there and then under here it's the same thing so it's like just sort of clipped around the bottom here so as you can see the um this is the front of the seat, just clips off like that around the edge. You will need to take the buttons off probably just to get this bit out and to put it back on. So it's pretty easy just to undo one, two, three screws and get this out of the way. Cool. So now that you've got all the... So as you can see, here's one I just pulled out. Just awesome. So as you can see, the seat is separated into two pieces here. Um, you will need to also remove this ring here and this ring here um, which will allow you to put a pad on the back side here and a pad on the front side here so that the whole chair is heated. So now I've got those two rings out. Um, you can see I've got access to the back here. Um, I don't, I didn't take this bar out because th this is enough space to put your hand in there and put the pad right into the back. Um, I didn't even bother to take off this bracket, but if you did want to take this bracket off to get the fabric all the way up, all you have to do is pop this clip out and undo the screw from back in here. So um, next step is getting access for the wire, because you're going to be putting the pad here and the pad in the back, and you want the wire to go through the back of the chair um, and then under. So. Um, you'll be unclipping the bottom the bottom piece here so unclip these two and then now you've got access um, to the back um, fabric pillow here so you can run your wire this, this hole was already here so you can run your wire straight in it's probably for the factory heating heater seats um, and just run your wire in straight through there which will come out through this side so if you squeeze your hand in through there you'll be able to get all the way down and out you might need like a coat hanger if you're having trouble getting it all the way through to the back hole but it's pretty easy now as you can see this is the heated pad um, it actually comes as one piece just like this one over here um, you can cut it this way not, you can't cut it this way otherwise you'll disconnect the two there's two bus bars they go along here one there one here one for positive one for negative um, and then there's a thermostat in there so you can only cut this way um, once you cut that off obviously it's not connected anymore so um, I had to cut it into two pieces because the front and the back sponge is separate and then there's a bar that goes right across there so you'll need like a wire jumper to jump this gap um, because the fabric is pulled hard down there by the two by the two bars so you'll need to separate it somehow so what I did is I powered it up um, plugged it in 
to 12 volt, plugged into the battery controller, turn the heat on, um, and just, this is a cheap uh, $50 New Zealand dollar um, heated mat. I'm guessing because it was cheap. Um, not all of these elements are real, so some of these are actually made from string. Um, I opened it up and had a look inside and some are string, some are sort of like a carbon fiber type of rope. Um, so I marked which ones were actually real and which ones are fake. Um, the spacing is enough so that the whole seat does feel quite warm, but I would have preferred if the manufacturer created all of these strings as uh, real heated strings, but they didn't, so that's a bit of a shame. So I marked which ones are working um, after I powered it up, and then I marked which ones are not working with the X's. So I, I, I pretty much just cut down the middle of one of the X's, because that's not even a real heated element and I peeled back the, the fabric and going down each side uh, to like copper bus bars with some braided wire. So what I did is I got two little pieces of wire, it doesn't have to be very high gauge because it's only one or two amps going through these wires um, and I soldered on each side so that's positive, that's negative um, just to jumper it just to bridge this gap here in the seat so that we, when we tie it back down it's not pinching the mat. Um, you can probably, you could probably just um, put some holes through the mat, heated mat, and, and reconnect these, um, what do you call them, these uh, here, but there might be a chance that could short out the mat if you don't cut through one of the non-active. Cool, so now that we've got the two heated pads in place we're going to use some cable ties um, and we're going to tie these bars, um, these, these three bars here, back down to the, the bars that are in the seat. Um, how uh, the same pretty much the same way that we took the old clips out except now we're going to use cable ties to cable tie the, the two bars together there you go so we've got two cable ties installed pretty easy trim off the ends so that there's no spiky bits in the seat um, I always like to push the heads around so that they're facing down instead of up so that yeah that replaces the the rings that we're holding the fabric down before and as you can see it's nicely pulled down just make sure it's nice and tight so the two bars are back how they were originally and um, yeah once you get these two bars cable tied down wrap the seat back around as the same way you took it off I have to say that the second seat takes much less time um, to do compared to the first seat so in terms of time this one took me a few hours to be honest to get it out of the car and um, fully assembled and heat pads soldered up and everything but this one's probably only taken me about an hour to this point here um, and then it's probably another hour's worth putting this all back together putting the covers back on um, and then of course clipping these clips back along the bottom here now, of course I did forget that we have to put the back uh, heated pad in as well so I didn't want to take apart the whole seat it takes a bit more time to take this bit off here but I found that when I sat in the seat my body was pretty much touching this part here and not really over here so I'm only going to stick a heated pad in from here to here anyway um, the pad is pretty much the whole length so there's not much more heated pad that could go here anyway um, and this part probably will take you an hour to get um, all the fabric off. At least the first time it will take you an hour, maybe the second time around take you about half an hour for the second seat since you know how to do it and you know how to get back together so I'll show you how to do that. And of course, um, there we go, it's back on. It may look like you've just destroyed your seat with all the wrinkles and stuff but once you get all the, the bottom clips clipped in around the bottom here, all these things, um, it will look good again and then of course the more you rub your hand around it and flatten it out and everything the more um, it will 
improve its appearance. Um, I've just connected mine up to a battery just to see if it's actually working still. And of course it is. The front pad and the back pad are working fine. So yeah. Um, now on to the back pad. And to get access to the the sponge we have to get this whole rear piece off um, so that we can get the rings off from around here and to do that we just need to take out these two screws here um, and then we'll end up taking this cover off so I'll show you how to do that in a minute cool two screws are out um, now you should just be able to pop this up out like that and like that and then pull back uh, to unhook the back um, so if you're having trouble to get getting this off, there's two clips here. These two that you'll need to um, unclip, maybe with a screwdriver from the side if you can't get, if you can't yank this up. Um, and then of course slide it back because there's these two hooks here that hook into the top. So yeah, um, next step is to undo this. So same technique, get a bolt cutter or some fat ass pliers to break this ring. Um, and you'll also be taking off these these three rings one here one there and one there um, which will that that's the bottom piece of the the seat cover from the bottom and then of course you have to wrap uh, you have to loosen this part off and this part off to get you to get your um, heated mat up from the other side so we have to get rid of this ring this ring this ring this ring this ring this ring um, and then we should be able to get enough uh, enough space in there to slide our pad up and through the bottom. Now that you've got all those rings off, take this cover off here. So it's held on by some clips. Another same style clip. Um, and then undo these two. So these these two here, one. Get off sometimes. One, and two. And these ones are holding the front fabric piece in here, which you'll have to fold back through into the front in a moment, so that you can slide your heater element um, in from the bottom of the seat and from the side. So now we're in the front of the seat. Well, I should say the back of the seat. Just pull it out from behind. Um, you'll be putting that all back in afterwards, but don't worry, slide it all back oh, as far as you can. Of course, we have to remove the rings. Well, you probably don't need to remove the rings. You can probably just tuck your heated pad in all the way up to there. As you can see, the pad pretty much covers the whole back of the chair. Um, and because the last wire I tested, well, the last string, I should say, that they put in here isn't actually creating any heat, I want to cut that piece off um, so that I can bring the last um, carbon wire element that is actually working I can bring that all the way up to the top here so that I've got heat right up here starting there and then down, 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 down um, all the way to the bottom just like where these ticks are um, I checked that's where they're working all the rest are made from string fake elements the top off now so yeah it's a perfect fit from the top to bottom um, this is just a waste because there's nothing in there just run the wire back through there like you said before and out of here um, another thing to mention is that the double-sided tip that they put on is, seems to be on the wrong side because um, it should really be on the back side that you want to stick it to see but I'm not using the double-sided tape so it doesn't really matter looking good there we go the chairs all back together ready to go straight back into the car underneath we have the two wires that are here for plugging into the loom um, the, heater, the heater loom and then of course we have to plug these wires back in as well bit messy under there looks like it's never been vacuumed and then we'll get back and connect all this up so yep connect it all up into there we'll run the 12 volt back into the cigarette lighter connection here cool so it's actually the next day and the seat is now installed in the car and connected up so there we go back in place where it normally is put a crap down there stop cleaning it up 
um, and the center console is all back in place. So, turn the car on. Um, we'll see that the lights are on, so that means it's heating. 